What's up, everybody? Welcome to Podcast Now. I'm Alex, and in this video, I want to talk about Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII Reunion. Long name, but I want to talk about if the game is actually worth getting, and uh, and this is not going to be uh, entirely a review. I don't want to call it a review. I haven't beaten the game yet, but with that being said, I put in just over 10 hours. I feel pretty good about where I'm at. I'm making a lot of progress, and I feel like I have a pretty good you know grasp of how I personally feel about the game, so I kind of want to walk you guys through it. Now, really quickly, I do want to throw this out that uh, Square Enix did provide me a code of the game they gave it to me the day of it's not like I got to play it like two weeks before like other people so I got it the day of just want to throw it out there as always with these things right though that doesn't change really what I'm going to say and what I'm going to say is that the game is pretty solid I don't really want to say the game is anything more than that and in a way that's somewhat disappointing but it's also I've never played and I've said this before I've never played Crisis Core before so this was an entirely new experience for me going into the game and I do overall like it and I would say solid because I wouldn't say there was anything that's blown me away uh, thus far but also there has been a couple things that have been like oh that's a little odd now with that being said this is a remaster a remaster not a remake I, I still see people calling it a remake and yes it's kind of like a hybrid in between both but it, I would say I would classify this game way more of a remaster than a remake at times, this game looks absolutely, you know, breathtakingly good. Um, some of, like, the more CG cutscenes. I would say even just, like, the general game itself overall does look a lot better, obviously, than what, like, Crisis Core. You've seen, like, those side-by-side -side comparisons. It looks good. It definitely looks good. The issue with the PSP and then it being a remaster is you see some of the tendencies that I guess they had to do back. So this is probably... Uh, potentially a disadvantage of not having played the game ever before and then also kind of knowing where gaming was in terms of like level design and just even constraints of the platform and then where it is now right it's a little bit different I would say than if you played the game and you already knew that stuff going into this one which is fine which is fine but for me it's like you know, the, the, the base game, I actually kind of like how it's set up. Like, you got the chapters, so you got, like, your core missions. And then you have missions, like actual missions, where they're just these side things that you do. You open a bunch of chests. You fight the enemies that you've already faced, but they're kind of put into it a little bit differently. Sometimes you actually do fight unique enemies, and it's, it's your way of grinding. You just keep going. And there are countless count – I mean, I've probably done – 40 plus easily missions uh, side missions in this game they take a couple minutes each right you can extend them a little bit longer if you explore and not go directly to the boss you know in each one but that's how the game is set up there is hundreds upon hundreds of side missions that will take you anywhere between two and ten minutes each and then you got your your main missions your your uh, your 10 chapters and i'm on chapter seven by the way and that's how the game is broken up and in a way, I kind of like, like, it very much feels like a game made, not in this decade, not in this era. It definitely feels like a game made in the past era. That, actually, I'm completely okay with. I actually like it. I like the old-timey feel to it. What I don't like is during, like, the main missions when it's a very simple objective, but there is constant stopping, constant. So you could be, I think it's, like, maybe Chapter 5 or 6 where you're chasing, I won't say who, but you're chasing somebody, and enemy, and this actually happens a couple times in the game, and enemies just, like, get in your way. Like, it's just a long field or a long uh, pathway, let's say, to get to this person, and you run, and you just get stopped over and over. And then the game almost makes like a joke out of it where, where Zach will say something like, are you, are you serious right now? Like something like that, where it's just these really odd breaks in the story and in the main objective of what you're trying to do just to pepper in more enemies really to fight. Now, it becomes like, it, it's, it's kind of like a pro-com. Like I, I like it in some sense because you're grinding. You're grinding whether you know it or not, I do know it, right? Where it's like, okay, I mean, this is really breaking up like the, the tempo of the game, but at the same time, I'm leveling up. I haven't fought somebody that I've like really, really been upset about that I've had to. Like sometimes with these games, you can get yourself in a really nasty pickle and uh, you may not be powerful enough to defeat them. You may have to go back. I have done it, I think organically, where because I've done so much of the side stuff and, and just grinded it out, I haven't really had an issue with any of the main bosses that probably will cause you trouble. You know, I've died a few times, but I figured it out for each one. And that's, again, that's also a game's strength. The combat in this game is extremely good. So while the tempo is constantly being broken up and you're going to fight the same, you know, variety of enemies over and over and over again, 
and it's going to happen a lot of times in every single mission at the same time the combat is extremely good it is it's it's really fun it's a mix and because i've seen gameplay of crisis core it's definitely a mix of what that game is plus what final fantasy 7 you know remake is and trying to kind of speed things up make some of the more combos like uh, i guess more fluid right definitely like it i definitely like the combat and again that's it's a pro con because i'm enjoying myself like every time i'm stopped it's like all right well if anything the only con is it's annoying to the story like it's just kind of stopping me from getting to the next thing and the story is pretty solid like i don't i don't think it's incredible that's another thing i've seen people say like it'll tug on heartstrings a little bit i mean there's some emotional scenes i guess but it hasn't really hit me yet but i'm not all the way through so we'll see if the last you know three and a half chapters um can do it for me but it is breaking up the story which is annoying but it's also rather fun like the game is fun and i have put 10 hours in and i i am constantly playing it like i'm, I'm not done i don't plan on being done i want to grind it out i also want to beat all the side missions so it, it's tough like this game is not it's not definitely like a universal love in my head. Like I, I kind of thought, I will be honest, like going into this game, I thought I'd absolutely love it. I did. I thought I'd absolutely love this game. And I would say I don't absolutely love it. I definitely like it. I'm not mad at all that I'm playing it. I want to beat the entire thing. The question, of course, for videos like these, these impressions or reviews or thoughts or whatever is, is the game worth $60? Is it worth actually buying? And that's that's tough, but it also is because of the franchise that it's in. So I would argue it's actually rather easy. If you've been in the Final Fantasy or you played Crisis Core in the past, I can't imagine you even needing videos to tell you yes or no. I think you can make up your own mind. If you've never played these games, again, like that's probably where it comes. I I firmly believe, even without playing it, so it may sound you know uh, not right for me to say it, but without playing crisis core on psp i think this is the best place to play it i like be, just because everything is enhanced the visuals are enhanced the gameplay is massively enhanced and then everything else like if you like the story or you like the side missions or you like the the way the levels are actually built which again definitely feels like it was built 15 years ago right like but if you liked that none of that has changed so there really is no reason why the PSP version would be your go-to for this game anymore. It would be this version. Like, it just has to be. But then, okay, well, that's to the diehards. Again, they may not even look for these videos because who cares, right? They already know. But say you're somebody who's kind of a new Final Fantasy fan, which honestly I've talked about in my kind of lead-up videos to Crisis Core. I kind of am, am one of those. Like, I, I played a Final Fantasy VII Remake. That's the first one I went from start to finish. I played a little bit of 15. I watched my sister play the Lightning Trilogy. Like, I, I'm new age. I just am. And I'm still kind of, like, growing into my love of Final Fantasy. I can't wait for 16 right but i will say if you're that or if you think crisis core is going to be like your gateway into final fantasy i don't know i actually would say probably not because the gameplay is good i don't think the gameplay is better than final fantasy 7 remake the story is good i don't think it's like spectacular though the visuals like all that stuff is fine or in, in at some instances is actually like incredible other instances it's definitely a remastered you know game and, and kind of nothing more right so it's tough like if this is your first go in into final fantasy i don't think this is maybe gonna sell what final fantasy is if this is and again maybe like me like i've played some of them this is just like an extra thing let's learn about zach let's learn about that story then it's not going to hurt, you know, bad at all. So it's tough because you got to ask the question of does it justify, you know, the money? And I think it depends kind of on the fandom. But overall, for my 10 hours, I'm enjoying. And I think, again, to me, that's kind of the most important thing. Nothing is blatantly bad. The war the thing that's the closest to bad is the the constant tempo stops in the game which just feels like they had to do that because of the psp and because this is just a remaster they're not gonna like overhaul the game they it literally is kept the same you would never make a game in terms of how the levels are broken down you would never do that now ever even in final fantasy games you would never do that now so that is the biggest like i guess con and then the rest i think is is either pretty solid to like a uh, way above average like, again like combat probably being the greatest thing in this game i really do love the combat but the biggest thing to me is i'm still playing it like if i 
played four or five hours, and I thought, okay, well, I'll, uh, I'll go back to Midnight Suns now, and I'll just put this game down. That would signal, you know, this game didn't grab my attention, but it did grab my attention in some ways more than others, but it absolutely did. So I do think it's worth it. It just depends on where you are in your Final Fantasy journey, uh, and that's, that's kind of where I would land on it. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Make sure you guys are subscribed, bell icon turned on, and I'll see you all on the next one.